Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call uh, this meeting of the uh, Ramsey County Home Rule uh, Committee to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Uh, has everyone had a chance to read through the minutes of the last meeting? And everybody yes. feel comfortable with that? I move we approve the minutes of the last meeting. There's a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Is there a second? I'll say thank you. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion carries. The next item is approval of the agenda today. Uh, is there anybody who wants to make an amendment to the agenda or has any comments on it? Hearing none, uh, then I entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So, so motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor of approving the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion carries. The next item on the agenda is uh, picking up where we left off on the drafting of the current uh, working charter. Uh, and if you'll remember, uh, we had completed uh, Articles 1, 2, and 3 on the 1991 document for last time. Uh, before we get started, uh, I had a chance to talk with Kerry right before this. Uh, and our question with respect to at the end of the third, set, the end of the second uh, article, uh, the very last part that we adopted verbatim with the understanding that we asked Gary, uh, talking about the uh, enumeration of powers in this charter uh, are not exclusive. Um, whether or not we need that included. And I think Carrie can speak to that. I don't think it's necessary that it's in there. It doesn't hurt that it's in there. Um, if the majority wants it to stay in there, that's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. It needs a little uh, tweaking just for some typos if we're going to keep it in there at all. Okay. Are there any thoughts with respect to the final clause of the second article?
where the initial discussion on thoughts on Article 4 or where we left off last time around. Yeah. But we hadn't started before yet, had we? We had discussed it a little bit and then we tabled yeah. it. And now this is specifically the four we're talking about. That's, right? that's where we were working off of, yeah. You have, I have one. So long as it says change in alteration at the top, correct? Yeah. I guess I have. <laughs> and I think if I remember correctly, it, we kind of broadly agreed on the sentiments of, of the article, um, but perhaps there was some concern about the, the, the way that it was laid out and written. Uh, and so I think last time we were, were taking some time to think about some ways that we might be able to write it a little bit more concisely, if I remember correctly. definition of what we mean by the elected offices because some of them cannot be combined and some of them cannot be combined. So maybe a sentence or something referencing that, you know, those that are allowed to be done, you know, allowed to be combined under statute or something, just to kind of clarify that for anybody that may be yeah. a little confused. And I think that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, and be it maybe a provision right after the title kind of that you have, or offices, change and alteration of elected offices, something kind of right there, um, not to be a separate standalone clause, or the standalone clause defining. Could you actually list the, it's like in the, well, I think it's. 1109. I think so, but it should be listed out. Yeah, so, so could you list yeah. actually the yeah. We could. So, so yeah, okay. and, and that might make sense, but I raised this to, to Carrie, this may never ever matter. But one of my concerns is is if we say that these are the offices right. that, to which and this pertains, then, then if for some reason in the future you had to create a new elected office, mm -hmm. and it's not listed, then potentially you'd have to go back and rework the, document. the document to have document. authority over it. And the goal is to make Right. Um, the other thing, uh, and more so for me under Clause 2, no elected official may have their office's scope of work, responsibilities, or authority changed. I, I might want to play with um, the word authority just to define that a little bit, specifically statutory authority or something that we're talking about. Because there's certain pieces of elected offices, there's certain authorities that are given under the code to elected offices as well as authority that's given to like the board of county commissioners and there's certain areas where they cannot they cannot um, mesh they cannot mesh the county of commissioners have no authority to change the authority in that type of an elected office in this circle sure. so to speak so i might tweak with that a little bit i mean that's just something that's coming to mind when i read them the clauses But then at discussion at the last meeting, we had that the words without their expressed written consent be added to the end. Right, right. But I think we need to be crystal clear on what types of authority we're talking about. Because there's different types of authority. And I think that should be a little bit of a To word that. Specifically. <coughs> And to catch everybody up on why we wanted to add that final without their express written consent at the end um, was because we realized as we were looking at this that if you were ever looking to merge two offices or potentially take part of an office's authorities and responsibilities and move it so it's connected to a different office, um, you, you couldn't necessarily do that if one person was, was choosing not to run for re-election based on the way this is written. If one of the people was not going to run for re-election, but the other one was, and the authority, the changes were going to affect both offices, then you could never do it. So you'd have to have a, a sort of a, a, an added portion there that you need their express written consent to say that, you know, I, I, I am Kennedy the auditor, and it may be that they're going to change the way that the treasurer's office works, and I may end up with more authority, but I want to run again. Then, then Kennedy needs to give consent to that as well. Uh, 
by writing. Does that make sense? It makes sense. So that, that would be the rationale for why that change was added. Change. Okay. Um, the only other concern that I have with the way that this is uh, laid out is on the final, the fourth uh, clause, uh, where it says the rules and restrictions laid out within this document. Um, we're going to have to refine that portion of that sentence, rules and restrictions laid out in this document, I think to reference directly uh, the article, or whichever article it ends up being, uh, for referral and yeah, yeah, in order to get whatever. So, so that, that's my only other choose there. Yeah, okay, thank you. Talked about it in the last meeting that my, uh, I, I don't mind the, I don't know what the word would be, verbosity of the, uh, of, of the, of the, the article, but my only concern is that you almost have to put in some type of protection so that you can only change or merge an elected office into an appointed or change of. Uh, responsibilities in an off year election when they're not up for election again. Because then it's, it, 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 you're going to run into that situation where, for instance, you know, your elected office holder says, okay, a year before they're up, I'm going to retire. So then you're going to have to ask the people to change the, if you wanted to make it appointed, change the elected to an appointed, but if that fails, if you're not running a concurrent election for the elected office, you have nobody to fill that slot. Right? <laughs> so you almost have to say, okay, it's Candy's up in this election in 18. If she's up again in 22, we're just saying, I'm going to retire in 2022. She would almost have to give you the heads up before 2020. See so you have that election in 2020 or hold a special previous to it so you know if you're going to have that combined office or not. Because otherwise you're going to confuse everyone right. if you have to run concurrent elections trying to either combine an office or then also have somebody elected at the same time just in case that fails. Yeah. I, I, I believe under century code, I don't know how it would work, but we would probably have the ability to appoint but not really. <laughs> and I really don't want to take read the whole thing and then have it taken to the Supreme Court because we screwed up. No. So we, we almost have to have a clause in there to basically clarify, clarify that so that doesn't occur. Sure. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be comp complicated, but just basically say, you know. In other, in other words, what you're saying is uh, stick an amendment in there. Yes. Just, just another clause that would basically yeah. say if you, you would want have to, this written here and then amendment one or whatever, this is what we need to do in case this situation happens. Yeah, essentially. I mean, I think you could almost do it by saying, other than a vote of the people of Ramsey County during a regular, regularly scheduled primary or general election, mm -hmm. uh, except in, in the case where uh, such a such a change would be on the, on the same ballot as, as in that elected office. Essentially. You know, yeah, some, you basically, something to that effect. Basically just, yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, basically just a fifth clause that says uh, but I, I think ch change of scope, change of scope of office uh, may only occur at elections when that appoint, that elected position is not uh, was But I'm saying I think it actually would fit fine in the first at the end of the first. Yeah, that'd be fine. You know, just as a... Yeah, I don't care where it goes. I'm right. just saying I think yeah. we have to put that in there someplace just so it's... I agree. You know, I mean, uh, it, in, in practice, whoever's sitting on the commission at that point is going to think about that. But if 
you know, expressly putting it in there just so you say, hey, this can't happen, I think is, is good practice. Not to, you know, make it longer than I already got it, but. So have it be part of the I think we're looking at it right now. Yeah, I think that would probably fit best under number one. Just put another sentence in there that basically clarifies, right. and that that's all you need. Right. right. And I don't know exactly how we'd want to word it, but we can work on that. You know, we could in the, you know, make it sound legal. So I have a lawyer here. Yeah, I'll make it sound simple. <laughs> and I think probably. Even where it says as determined by an advanced by century code, that's probably also implied by saying a regularly scheduled primary or general election. Um, so you could basically say during a regularly scheduled primary or general election, it, except in cases where it would be concurrent with that elected office's term. Scheduled, yeah, scheduled expiration of term. Lucas, you said in this, the original one was in 1991, mm -hmm. and who brought it to, at, and then they said no, it was brought to the people, and they said no? It was brought to the commission, the and commission the commission chose no. not to, to put it on the ballot for all of the people. Okay, and then again in 2005? There was not a document referred to the commission in 2005. Okay, so since 2005, this is the first time this has come up then? Or, or, or in, a, in a, an official capacity. So, um, Century Code requires that in a case where a county seeks to potentially draft or adopt a home rule charter, it requires that a committee be formed by the Ramsey County Commission to look into uh, that, such, a, such a document and whether or not it would be feasible or appropriate for that county. And then, if and when that uh, committee presents a draft charter to the commission, the commission may then choose amongst its own membership whether or not they feel it's appropriate to bring to a vote of the people. Okay, so this board here, this home room board, will take it to the county commissioners mm -hmm. in its final form, mm -hmm. and those five people mm -hmm. will decide whether or not it becomes law or not whether or not it becomes law, but rather whether or not it will be on a ballot for the people to vote on. Okay, and now so this none of this can become law until it's put before Ramsey County voters. Okay. Okay. 
So, yeah, essentially, when we're all done drafting everything here as a, as a committee, we'll take a vote of all of us and say, should we recommend that the county commission puts it on the ballot or not? Okay. And we might say no, <laughs> we're all done. We might go, well, we've gone through this whole process and we don't think it's worth the time, or we might make it worse. And then, the, but at that point, the county commission then will, will have the ability to do as they wish. Okay, and you and Lucas are both Commissioner. county commissioners. Yeah, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you don't have any thoughts uh, with respect to the, the changes that, that uh, Adam pointed out are, are likely <coughs> necessary to uh, the provisions or how we would best include those changes? Is that the wording she's working on now? Then I'm just yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I don't know if we necessarily have to adopt language just for that stance, so to speak, right now. I mean, we can, That's fine, but I just I want to make sure that we've got a, a really strong initial yeah. sentiment in Article Four position, so that as we go forward, we know where we're at. We're yeah, we're trying to. Uh, I agree with what Adam stated. I think that you need to have that. It sounds understanding. Mean. Yeah, I do. I think that's true. Yeah. So I agree with that. I also think though that you need to have that. You know, I think the offices need to be listed. I understand where you're coming from, Lucas. That possibly in the future, if you, there are some changes to it, that it could come before. But I believe that with anything in the charter, there may be some changes, correct? That may have to come in. Well, at some point in the future, it may be amended. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, but. But I think um, I think the way that you do it then, and like I, I'm not opposed to listing them. I just think you got to list them the right way. So you, you might have to list it in such a way that it says uh, the elected offices of treasurer, auditor, recorder, uh, and, and the commission, and any other okay. and any other offices that, that may be created, uh, you know, through through the processes outlined within the local document. Right, I agree with that. You know, so, so that that way you say, you, you basically you set it up so You're that this anything. has the authority over any and all elected officials that the county level has authority over. So that would exclude the state's attorney and the sheriff because we don't have authority right. over there. So by so. listing the offices out, you're including those and then excluding the ones that aren't, so it's listed in there. Right. I agree with that. But, but just so that if, if for some reason we needed, at some point in the future, you needed to have an elected you know, some, somebody with authority over water. I don't know. Right. But if, if you needed a position to, to have some authority and that position was going to be elected so that you wouldn't have to come back and do an amendment, which you could in the future, but well, I'm trying to make sure that this covers enough bases that, that most possible futures are covered by what we've written, um, that it would have authority over that. So but don't you think we have to list those offices? Well, that's what he. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, the, the ones that exist. exist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the ones that exist. But just to say that, and and in addition to the, the those offices that have been enumerated, to say also any other future elected offices that may be created, you know, through through initiation or any other except for sheriff or or uh, what's the other one? Yeah, yeah. Sheriff, sheriff and state's attorney. Are so it's all offices uh, except you know or something. Like that. So it's. Well, yeah, and essentially we have to, you have to legally list the offices okay. by century code. Because if we don't legally list the offices, then technically the home rule charter is in violation of century code and that, that can't be. So we'll have, right. yeah, we have but, to. But I'm just saying, I. No, but I understand where you're coming from. You're trying to. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and I, I don't have any problem with, with uh, you know, essentially covering our bases for the future. My, my only statement would be that, and I don't know this for certain, but North Dakota has been a state for, what, 100 years? 28 years, and I don't know of any counties that have any additional elected positions. Right, right. That add that's, elected positions. Generally speaking, they don't get added. But you never know. If, right. if, if we have the initiative capability, maybe maybe the people will want to add a position. I mean, it's, it's possible. Well, and I, so, I think Morton County had it worded in a. Is that the one you're looking at? I think Morton had it worded where they listed the elected offices. And that's one seems to be referenced. That was the one we had looked at. They listed county treasurer, recorder, auditor, and you know, whichever ones that we would be doing. They you know, listed who would remain elected. Yeah. 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 Right. 
right. And I kind of, we kind of liked the wording of that um, one. And that's our article four. Well, we there you go. language too. I think we should almost just lift that, that whole mm -hmm. section. And place it before because I, I like the idea of also stating still we want to stay with five county commissioners and all that at the same time because you know it's implied obviously but it doesn't hurt to write a right. document. But but then I think that by 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 writing it in the document you also explicitly give this authority to control yeah. that as well. Yeah and I, I like how they have it written it's straightforward it's easy to understand. Yeah, and I think that that would fit in even prior to any of the enumerated. Yeah. Then leave these number yeah. points here. Yeah, and then here. opening <laughs> block. Yeah, and then it's, you know it says the elected offices of the county church are recorded under the sheriff and state's attorney shall remain intact as elected position except as may be modified pursuant to Article Four dot whatever this is going to be. I don't know, I'm just hoping that Carrie saves us because I have to have her guess. <laughs> you like Martin. Yeah, we meant to stop. Let's see, did we ever express this to Dad earlier? Yeah. And just for clarity, because I think you guys got this the one that we did last time. Anywhere that it refers to Article X, the reason it says Article X is because we didn't know how the other articles down the line would, would be numbered. Yeah. Uh, and so we just we put that in as filler, uh, just to clarify. That's what I got for you. Uh, all of the offices. 
probably down to that article 2.3, and obviously it'll be article X for us until we have the articles correct. Second. So is it article 6 that you're... Yeah, yeah article 6, article 6 in Morton counties, but it'll be article X for us. Right. Section 1 through 2. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're well, would that just be Article 4 for us? It'll be yeah, Article 4, but, but assuming we we'll leave it so in the I same place. Which, but for now, I'll we'll call it back. Article 4. Yes, this this is would be the beginning of Article 4. Would be the total statement would be Article 4 elections and then offices to be elected would be the first section. Okay. Uh, so would, you, would, you, would you like me to read the whole thing? Uh, I would like you to read it, okay. but, but will you before you do that, we will you amend that motion? Uh, to include the adoption of uh, the language as reworked by Carrie so that she can continue reworking it while we move on. Oh, so you want to put this whole thing in at the same time? Well, just as, as it will end up being amended, with the understanding that we'll, we'll read it we before the end of the meeting. Yeah, that that's sense? fine. That's fine. Yeah. So you, will you amend that motion? Yeah. Well, I amend the motion to also please. add change and alteration of elected offices as section one through two. two. Okay. Of Article, of Article four. four. Okay, then, then at that point, will you please read? Okay, so my motion would be to add Article 4, Elections, uh, Section 1, Offices to be elected. Number 1, the Board of County Commissioners shall, co shall consist of five members who shall be elected on a nonpartisan ballot. All of the candidates seeking the Office of County Commissioners shall be voted upon by the qualified electors. Number 2, the elected offices of the County Treasurer, Recorder, Auditor, Sheriff, and State's Attorney shall remain intact as elected positions except as may be modified pursuant to Article 4, dot two and then it would be section two change and alteration of elected offices and then and then, and then the amended. statement as amended on the sheets that we have okay perfect and then before the end of the meeting we'll read that as well um, okay so there's a motion and a second made uh, to adopt the language verbatim from morton county uh, including a, a, a second provision under Article 4, uh, which has been laid out in premise, but not in verbiage, um, to, to be adopted. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of adoption signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion carries. We'll move on to Article 5. Uh, and I'll, I'll read Article 5 because we have not read it right yet. Article 5, pertaining to the reference of ordinances and resolutions. The citizens of Ramsey County shall have the right to refer ordinances or resolutions implementing home rule powers. Qualified county electors, at least equal in number to 15% of the number of electors voting in the county for the office of governor in the last election in May, by referendum petition, suspend the operation of any ordinance or resolution enacted by the Board of County Commissioners except emergency ordinances approved by at least two-thirds of all members of the Board of Commissioners and except those enactments implementing uh, public projects upon which an election or referendum has already been held pursuant to the law or this charter or of which provide for meeting obligations of the bonded indebtedness incurred by a prior ordinance or a prior election uh, or referendum. An emergency ordinance shall contain a clause declaring an emergency and become effective on final passage. The filing of referendum petitions against one or more items, sections, or, any, or, or parts of any ordinance shall not provide the remainder from going into effect. Referendum petitions, uh, petitions shall be filed with the county auditor no later than 30 days after the adoption of the ordinance or resolution. Each ordinance or resolution referred to the electors shall be placed upon the ballot by the county auditor at the next election occurring 30 days after the filing of sufficient petitions or at a special election called by the Board of Commissioners, whichever shall occur first. If a referendum position, a petition is filed against emergency ordinance, such ordinance shall be in effect until voted on by the electors. And if it is then rejected by a majority of the votes cast thereon, it shall be thereby repealed as of the tenth day after the election. The county auditor shall pass upon each petition, and if the auditor finds it insufficient, the auditor shall notify the committee for the petitioners and allow five days for correction or amendment. 
Each petition shall have printed thereon referral of county ordinance blank or resolution providing for blank and shall accurately identify and summarize the true nature of the enactment or a portion of the enactment being referred. In addition, each petition shall have listed the names of the three electors who shall constitute the committee for the petitioners and who shall represent and act for the petitioners. At the bottom of each petition, the circulator of that particular petition shall sign an affidavit affirming the signers thereto are known to be qualified electors of the city. This article shall be self-executing and all of its provisions treated as mandatory. <coughs> ordinances may not or may be enacted to facilitate its operation, but no ordinances shall be enacted to hamper or restrict or impair the exercise of the rights herein reserved to the people. So should that city be changed to county? Absolutely. I would think so. And then the the days are okay, auditor will the first auditor will live in 30 days after adoption. Uh, if it's okay with you, Jeff, I'd like to start to do paragraph by paragraph. Okay, sure. So we'll start with the first paragraph uh, that begins the citizens of Ramsey County shall. Uh, I, have, I have a couple of notes. Um, on the fourth line, it where it says for the office of governor in the last election should be specified the last general election and not the primary. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Uh, line four. All right. In the last oh. general election, just so there's no no question about the primary. Uh, and then I, I think, uh, I don't know. Thank you. You're very thank welcome. You. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, thank I, you. I don't know what the specification would be, but I just went and looked quickly to see what 15% of the qualified electors would be. Uh, in the last general election for governor, which was 2016, 5,331 Ramsey County residents voted for governor. So to take that times 15%, that's 799.65. So you would take uh, either 800 or finding 0.65 of a person would pass 799 to get it. So you need 800 signatures then in order to initiate or, 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 or to, to uh, refer an ordinance or resolution. So I, that just for a starting point, do we think that's reasonable? Do we think that's too high? I mean, because that was one of the one of the things that got. That was what I think quite probably a bit. one of the major concerns. Yeah. Is where to place that bar? Yeah, and and it got talked about quite a bit at the public meetings. You know, we want it low enough where it's attainable, but high enough where it's not happening five times in a lecture. I had underlined too, Adam, and I thought that that was pretty standard when you look around. This about that. Yeah. I, I 15%? Yeah. Well, it might be in these, but I'm saying statewide, that's nowhere close to being standard. two-thirds, right? No, one-third. Or... No, if, if you want to do a petition or referendum, I think it's usually number 3% or something. Yeah. It's really, really low statewide. If you want to get on just without a non-constitutional, I think it'll take about 13,000 votes, and I don't have a clue what that is percentage-wise, but it's probably close to 5. I don't even know. If you're looking statewide, but are you looking at a population of the... No, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, saying, we're making ourselves much more restrictive than it would yeah. take by a percentage to even get something on yeah, the state. That, that's my point. Is is that this is more restrictive as it speaks than something like, you know, statewide uh, you're, referral. Do you think you have a number like ten percent or something? Or uh, I don't know. Well, that's a I honestly don't have a preference. I'm just just for the sake of talking about it more than anything. Right. Uh, let's see how many people voted in the last general election in the whole state. In the governor's election. Uh, yeah, so in the last statewide election for governor, 339,601 people voted. And I know it takes something like 13,254, I think, to get on, uh, to get uh, to change non constitutionally. So take that and divide it by 339, basically. Yeah, that's like 4%. And I think it's twice that bar to uh, try to initiate a constitutional change. Right. So about 27,000 and change. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like 4 and 8% of the state work at 15. So we're twice the bar just to refer an ordinance. And then the tough part is, is again, you know, skipping ahead, if you're only giving people 30 days to collect those signatures, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of signatures to collect in this county. 
Yeah, it is in the time of audit. And, and uh, you know, the, the thing I would state is, that in, and maybe a county as small as ours population-wise, maybe a higher bar makes more sense. Uh, you know, simply because 800 signatures to collect here is a lot easier than collecting 15% of the qualified elected signatures in Cass County. I mean, that would take a full-on assault of people to <laughs> try right. to collect as many, you know. 800 is, is a doable task. 30 days is awful short. Is, is there a way we, we could find kind of a happy medium to try to allay the fears that some people might have while not making it impossible, uh, such that you could essentially say, um, uh, say let, let's say that the number is 10%. 10% of the electors in the last uh, general election for governor, uh, but not less than 250 signatures. Right, so then that way you place a lower bound even if no one even if nobody voted for some reason, you still have a, you'd still have it. So that, that way you still have a minimum number, whichever is higher. So 10% of those who voted at the last election, or 250, or what have you. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's so then that way, then that way you create a band where you can't you can't end up with for whatever reason there could possibly be 10 signatures well, putting a bunch of stuff on the ballot, which I'm not saying would happen, but. Well, that if way. that's if you don't sure always go by the number of electors for when you have election for a governor, you that changes. I mean, yeah, it's always a moving target. It's it's a moving target, is right. Because yeah. for instance, uh, you know, running for county commission, you have to get signatures. Mm -hmm. Last time I ran, uh, the first time I ran, I had to get like a hundred and eleven. No, this time it's down to eighty-seven. Just because of the amount of people voting change, so so, so that's, it, there's, and that's all in state statute how that's laid out. Mm -hmm. But I think, but I think that's position. for that's, that position. Yeah. That's why it might be valuable to have a lower bound. You know, where you say or or 250 signatures, whichever is whichever is higher. Yeah. Right? So you'd say X percent or a number, whichever is higher. And then that way, the people who are concerned that every single thing under the sun is going to end up referred or or what have you. Uh, that their concerns are relayed because you say, hey, look, this is much more restrictive even than run for a position or something like that, while still saying that on average it's going to be higher. Yeah. And I guess, you know, if, if we look at that, I mean, I'm bounding outside of, the, outside of the first paragraph, but you know, on the end here it says, in order to allay fears of citizens that the board of county commissioners would abuse the new homework powers, some charter commissioners may feel it necessary to give citizens the right to refer ordinances and resolutions implementing homework powers. Uh, so, also, initi initiative of ordinances from the people isn't even specified. Which I, which I think we would, I'd like to see. Yeah, so and that should be part of the same section. I almost am of the opinion that referral of an ordinance that's passed by the county commission should be a lower bar than initiating something from the people. Do you feel that that might make things too complicated to have two separate standards? I don't know. I like how. Well, Walsh County, I mean, no, I County has two standards. Yeah. Do they? Yep. Okay. They have 15% um, for initiative and 10% for referendum. And that's kind of what I was, I was thinking 10, 15, or 15, 20, something. I mean, I want to make it hard enough where people have to go work right. to a point. Sure. You know, and maybe maybe we make that 30-day window a little longer because 30 days is... Most of the people have heard of, of the... the uh, well, I, don't, I think they got to have more than 30 days. Yeah, or, I agree. Part of uh, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you make it 30 days, they're thinking that you're trying to pull something over there. I, I agree. I mean, I think even 60 days would be a pretty reasonable window. Well, I, I would agree with 60, but I, I can't go along with 30. No way. I, I, but, well, but again, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. So just with respect to, because right now we're talking about where we want to place that bar, potentially. Adoption of ordinances. And it, oh, okay. well, definitely the majority has 15% though. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying that that's what we would have to do. I'm not saying that's pretty standard across the board. Yeah, when I looked at it, I was looking at all the numbers, you know, to see if it would match up. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
fifteen percent to two thirds, and yeah. but um, like Adam said, making them work for it, and, you know, change something. Rodney. Well, fifteen percent that can change by the amount of voters. Right. Yeah, of course. I mean, so that that makes it pretty flexible. Yeah. It, it, you know, it all depends, give or take, if it's a if it's a hotly contested governor's race or something. It's well, going to come out and vote. If they can't get fifteen percent, it's not going to go through the vote anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. A majority of everyone has thirty days, so yeah, and that's that's the majority too. Is fifteen percent thirty days? Yeah, and so it's yeah, I was thinking forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah, can you close that door? I sure think it's like noisy. Sorry. I, uh, I actually really like. Uh, Thank you. I like Orange Counties, I think. <laughs> the two? The yeah, two? Yeah, that's just my preference. Yeah, I can understand if you guys want to go one. I mean, just for simplicity's sake. But I, I don't know. I, I think there's a difference between initiating something from the people and referring something from the commission. I, I don't have a problem so much with that. If maybe at the beginning you put the difference then, in, well, yeah, yeah. In, put the difference between the uh, reverend and the ordinance, just write it just like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that, that person. Is that, I, I don't recall it, but one of them had a resolution. Um, yeah, yeah, we have it in Article 3 right now that we already adopted. Okay. We have the difference between a resolution okay. and the ordinance. I like that then. And then, yeah. then I and, 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 and an, an initiation versus. So you can refer a resolution or an ordinance, right. or you can initiate a resolution or an ordinance from the people. I, I've always been of the opinion that if you're if it's if it's something where the county commission did something stupid and you think it was a stupid thing, then you should be able to call them on the carpet easier than if you think you have a fantastic idea and it should go through. Then there should be a higher bar to get past that level. I think. I think that that's perfectly reasonable. I think that the way that you've worded then is the exact same way Walsh did. Uh, I would suggest yeah. that we include, just because I think that this will make it easier for passage and really not ever have a real effect on anything, to put a lower bound on it. So to say 15% for this, 10% for this, but not less than X. Right? Uh, what do you mean, not less than? So like not, but oh, not, not less than so many people. Right. right. So, so uh, not, but, but not less than 200 signatures. Right, because yeah, so 10% would be 533. But that's my saying. So, so if for some reason there was some ridiculously low turnout at an election, you know, you could potentially be looking at 100 initiated measures the next time. And I'm not saying it'll ever happen, but I'm saying that I can hear people saying that it'll happen at our meetings. So I think that we could we can include a lower bound, and, and it wouldn't affect anything. Yeah, any kind of guarantee. Well, yeah. well, my argument would be to people when they make that argument is that we're setting the bar twice as high as the state. Essentially, sure. Because they're at four and eight, and we're going to go ten and fifteen. That's twice as hard as hard to essentially get it done as the state. And I think the most we've ever voted on is probably seven of them. And I don't get me wrong, that's a lot. But you know, I, I don't think we're going to have like a wellspring of people running around with petitions. But if we do, we do. And I, and I don't, I don't necessarily believe it'll ever be an issue either. I think that you're right on the money, Adam. I guess the only reason why was because it was made so clear by the people that we talked to that they were afraid that that might happen. That by simply putting a concrete, this is the minimum, you're, you're going to be in a better position. Well, let me go back just out of curiosity's sake and look at the last few gubernatorial elections and, and see what the lowest number would be at like 10%, for instance. I, I agree with, I, I think that's a good idea. To put so, the cap on that and put the number on there. So the last Google drawer before that was in 2012, generally. Because okay. I mean, the only way that it would ever end up being an issue is if for some reason the, the population of the county dropped precipitously. Well, you are, right. like you said, a low turnout. Right, but, but I'm saying that, that, so what I'm saying is if for some reason the, the, the population of the county went to 2,000 people, right, then by having it at 200 people, would actually be much higher than 10 or 15 yeah. percent. So that's, that's the only time where that would actually become a higher standard than 10 or 15 percent yeah. in my mind. Right. But I don't think that that's likely to happen well, to have not. Yeah, so 10 percent after, for instance, the 2012 gubernatorial election would have been 
498 would be 10%. So it's pretty steady. Uh, the next election, about 300 more people voted. So it would have been 498, 15% would be, you have to get as much as that to, to So maybe the minimum we would say is no less than 500 or something like that. Or I mean, I think you probably go lower. Or, or yeah, maybe maybe 300 or something like that would be reasonable. I mean, because essentially, you know, we're going to hang in there population-wise, and right. I mean, well, you usually get a we, yeah, yeah. yeah, and you usually get a fairly consistent amount of people that show up to vote. You know, give or take a little bit here. So, so in principle, you're not opposed to that. Like, no, I'm not, I don't. In principle, I'm fine with that. I think I think it's a good I think it's good practice to set up a minimum guideline just to be safe in case. What do you think, Carrie, on that verbiage? She's writing a ramble. She's, like, right. <laughs> She's like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm writing. Are you different. talking about the exact figure? Or what well, we're, we're talking about so, like Walsh County has, where you would have uh, qualified county electors at least equal the number of 15% for initiative or 10 percent for referendum, and then also setting a minimum number. So if for some reason you had a gubernatorial election where hardly any people voted, mm -hmm. you would still have to at least hit a target number in petitions. You know, like three hundred. Yeah, no, or something. I know what you're saying. You're yeah. saying a percentage or a specific number. Yeah. Well, the percentages and a specific floor. Right. Yeah. You're basically creating. A floor. So, because most of the time, the percentages are going to be probably around five hundred people or seven hundred and fifty people for the two percentages, but a floor of like three hundred or something yeah. like that. Just say whichever is higher. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. Right. Whichever is higher. Right. But just in case, you know, all of a sudden we had like the worst snowstorm of all right. time no, on right. the 7th of November and only yes, 2,000 yes, people yes. showed up. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, I, I'm not saying I want that, but I'm just saying. And, and, I think it's smart. Yeah. It and, and the kicker of it is, too, is it in, in Ramsey County now, so many people vote by mail mm -hmm. right. that we pretty that much have a built in 4,000 people voting every mm -hmm. election by mail, basically, right? That blizzard on no, I mean. But again, I, and again, I like for, the for me, it, this I like isn't the even, this isn't this isn't even so much a practical concern as it is that <coughs> way when we get those questions or when people have those concerns, you say, yeah, listen, yeah. yeah, here's what we did. We yeah. took your concerns into consideration. That's good. We put a floor on it. Yeah. I like well, and in, in, in interest to that, then if we, ex I mean, and most people aren't going to know that most of them stay at 30 days, but if we expand to 60 days, we're making it easier to make it. Right. But I think, I think maybe we find a happy medium. I mean, because I mean, it looks like statewide, on average, it's 30 days. Maybe maybe we don't go to 60, maybe we go to 45. Well, <laughs> the only other thing you could do is extend it to 60 days and go to 15 and 20 with a four or 500. Okay, you guys, now I think you're just being smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 100% of the people need to be on the ballot. Or That's the right. Ship, you got to get it on the ballot. Door to door. I don't know. I'm just throwing the numbers out there. I mean, I, 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 I like the split, so it sounds like we're kind of all on board with that. It's just a matter of where, where you set the floor and the time span. Right. I like the split. I like the floor. I, I, I agree. I think we need to come up with a number that works. Yeah, you got to have a number to comply. Yeah. You can't just go by the percentage no, by itself. Yeah. What, what's, what's the what's, re what's a reasonable floor? Right. What's no, a reasonable floor? 300? And I think 300. Perfect. Or you can go 275 and leave it at 30 days. What did you say, Kathy? 275 and leave it at 30 days. Leave it at 30 days. Did you get 275 because it's essentially half of what the average turnout is? Half would be 250. Well, half would be 250. It's her favorite. 5% would be 250. She's just throwing numbers on it. I mean, you guys are throwing numbers. Yeah, that's true. And so, so I guess that's reasonable. Half of the normal turnout? Well, I mean, what she just said. Right? That, that, that's, you know, to me, that's I mean, a reasonable figure. But if you're going to do, like, you know, if you, if you don't think that the third days are the right number, then you need to do it at 45. 
I, 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 I think 300 is reasonable yeah, for a floor. No, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I'm just so thinking maybe about. Maybe you can start with that verbiage and. Yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at it from the. I'm thinking about the time span more than anything. Because essentially how this is stated, so it's okay, say we have a meeting the first Tuesday of March and we had ordinance authority. And we passed an ordinance. The minute we pass that ordinance, that clock starts. So they have to then come in, get the language approved by the auditor as quickly as possible if, it, you know, if they hate the ordinance. And then go out and collect all those signatures in like... Whatever your time span is, I mean, at, at this point in how we read, it's 30 days to go out and collect 500 signatures, and and that's you know if it's an ordinance, it's two readings. So hypothetically speaking, they would already have kind of mobilized their resistance to it. But still, I mean, that's. But isn't that the way it's always been? No, well, not, not in our county. No, we don't have this capability. Right, but I mean, it's. That's in in other been, counties, yeah, right. but I mean, state statewide, you have statewide, you have months. I mean, months. And you but have from what we've been in all the other right. home rule charters, we've been yeah. but no other, but no them. other home rule charter has a floor either. Yeah. Right. So like, so I guess what I'm trying to say is we're kind of off on our own anyway. Yeah. So I, I guess no, I, what makes yeah. sense for Ramsey County. Well, I mean, it, it, it all comes down to how easy do we want to make it. Just well, I don't even want to make it that easy. <laughs> but that's, that's why I think like 45 days is a happy medium because it, it gives you no, a lot. No, you don't want to make it easy. Yeah. No, you got to well, make and, it more. Well, and but, time frame too with, you know, county commission meeting, having this, doing this. Yeah, that's true. You have to coincide. Well, what question? I've been sitting here thinking about why 30 days. Why, why, why 30 days? Because everybody has 30 days. Now in Walsh counties, and maybe clarify, the referendum petition shall, upon determination by the county auditor that says petition is sufficient, suspend the operation of any ordinance enacted by the Board of County Commissioners. Is that suspension part of why we only do 30 days so that ordinance isn't enacted? for a longer period of time, does that make sense? I don't think so, at least in my opinion. I, I think, I think well, basically it's just reading that the minute you get enough signatures and the petitions are handed in, that ordinance is suspended until the vote occurs. Well, that's what she was, that's what yeah. she said. But is that why it's only 30 days? So that yeah. the ordinance so is in, in effect for the for a shorter amount of time, because if you well, get 60 days, now your ordinance is in effect for the 60 days. Yeah, that's possible. That's, that's a good point. I guess I didn't think yeah. of it that way. That's possible. I mean, the reasoning behind 30 days. There may be other reasons why they all well, it's kind of, kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's almost akin to how state law works, where if point. if the legislature passes a law, you have 60 days from the date of signing from the governor. Then at that point, if you want to recall the law previous to it going into action. So you can then, the, the best example recently was the corporate farming law. They passed it, then you had to go out and collect all the signatures to recall that law in 60 days before the law went into effect. So there's a time frame, it's essentially the same concept to a point. It's the same concept in reverse. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it's just, you know. Because the ordinance get enacted immediately. Right. Yeah, so the minute you pass the ordinance, it's an action. Walsh again. Walsh. See, I think there. I think she's on to something there. Would 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 it, would it be reasonable to to put in the ordinance section that that the minute an ordinance is voted on and passed, it, it do, it's not enacted for thirty days. Right. Or however, 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 however long, long that, just think that same however thing. long that time frame we're going to set in right. there is, so that people effect. would have time to go and do something. It doesn't right. take so, effect right away. Right. It always takes effect 45 or 60 or whatever right. days after. And, and you couldn't do that with the resolution, though, because resolutions need to have power of immediacy. Because resolutions are like bird man, you know. It's got well, to it does reference some other types of, you know, so certain ones that would not be affected yeah, by that form. because Thanks they have to happen. Yeah, an ordinance is permanent, so I mean, I, I think it would be reasonable to even put uh, something, you know, what the match the time span essentially. Yeah, that's fine. 
But if we do match the times, then I do think that we want to be at 30 days then. Because there are some times where you might want it. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> if a majority of the elected commissioners concur, the enactment will become, if an ordinance will become effective on the date stated in the enactment, or if no date is stated on the first day of the month following the date of enactment. So if we passed an ordinance at the first meeting, of March, for instance, it wouldn't take effect till April 1st unless we put in the ordinance that it takes effect immediately or 45 days or whatever it would be. So that I, I think you're probably right. You're onto it probably that the 30 days was put in there yeah. so that the ordinance wasn't enacted for a long amount of time and then something happened in between and then all of a sudden. But but I do I do like what you, what was written there, which was if the date is stated. And the only reason that I think that that might matter is is if you had something that was sort of almost halfway like an emergency ordinance, mm -hmm. which I don't know what that would be, but that you didn't want to wait 30 days to enact it. You well, in, in certain situations, you can use emergency ordinances to do certain things. Like the city has used, uh, just recently, they used, I think it was an emergency ordinance to move money over so that they could do culvert work. Right. Well, I mean, and this talks about emergency ordinances, and that's fine too. Yeah. Right? Um, and then as long as we're giving those different rules uh, to work under. But again, so before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, yeah, we're, we're still on the clause with respect to the percentages and involved with initiation and referendum. So I think let, let's take a step back from these timelines and just talk about what we think those numbers will be so that we can actually move forward. Do we have a sense that, that the number should be 15% for, for initiation, 10% for a referendum with a uh, no fewer than 300 signatures required, whichever is higher. Now you're changing that then from an election to a referendum, so you're dealing with two different things there again, huh? Initiation versus referendum? Electing, election, refer. No, I, I, no, no, I'm not changing that, no. No, I, I, do you have the Walsh County one in front of you, Ronnie? Yeah, I do. I can find the, it. Uh, it would be Article 5 in Walsh County. Uh, I, I think, and just in my honest opinion, I would like to see us essentially just take their whole section five and uh, enact that whole thing with the 10 and the 15 and then put a floor of 300 votes in there and then determine a, determine a, uh, and which, which one I have in the one article five. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I like, I like the whole article five. I think we should just, we should enact and it goes on to the second page too and that's where it states the, the dates and timeline, you know, 30 days and 30 days and, but, you know, I, I think we can expand it out to, I, I think 45 is somewhat reasonable, but then we have to go back and make a change to that ordinance then, too. Ordinance language. But I, I, I like, I like uh, Walsh County. I'm going to make a motion. I guess I can go along with that. <laughs> yes, I would like a motion. I'll make a motion that uh, we, we lift, we pilfer. <laughs> Walsh County is Article 5 for initiative and referendum uh, uh, with adding language uh, pertaining to a floor of 300 votes minimum required. Uh, 300 signatures. 300 signatures, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, with the highest, or you know, I don't know how we word it, but you know, with, with the higher amount, whichever, 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 whichever is higher, is, the, is what is necessary. Right. And uh, at the same time, uh, changing the petition uh, links to 45 days. I'll second. For, oh, just, oh, just oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, 45 days simply for the amount of time to collect signatures and put the petitions in, but keeping 30 days previous to a, the election in their cell. Carrie will fix the wording on that. <laughs> sorry. You understand where I'm coming from? Just, I didn't get the last part. There's so, so there's there's two different dates. There's how long do you have to collect the signatures, right. which is the 45. Then the second stanza seats. Each ordinance referred to the elector shall be placed upon the ballot by the county government oh. at the next election occurring after 30 days after the filing yep. of okay. Okay. sufficient petitions. So essentially it's saying yep. give the auditor time to make sure it can get on the ballot. Right. Yep. So changing that first 30 days to 
45. So up to the first paragraph under the referendum yeah. petitions? Sure. That should be 45? Would they audit and than 45 days after adoption? Is 30 days enough, do you believe? Because it would have to be more than that, unless it's a special. How that reads, it would have to be 64. It would have to match state law, wouldn't it? Because that's when... But we, that they have to match the... When you got, you've got to go balance. through the process of knowing that they're everybody's elected. I mean, uh, how do I want to put that? So that you know that, that they're able to vote. When do you have to order the ballot? Because yeah. it's got to get printed on the ballot. Mm -hmm. so so 64 it's, days previous is what state statute says. Well, why don't we just say that? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just reading all the screens here. Each movement report to the elector shall be placed upon the ballot by the county auditor at the next election occurring after 30 days after the filing of sufficient petition. Well, how yeah. did this one stay 30 days then? Huh? Because they probably didn't think that. Because I'm just thinking, hypothetically speaking, say you pass an ordinance in July uh, and it was effective immediately. You'd have 45 days to collect signatures. That would put you out to August. So then or even if it's later, you know, say say first of August, say first of August you pass the ordinance, you'd have 45 days to collect signatures. That will put you That's past the filing. That, yeah, that will put you past the filing deadline already for getting it on the ballot. It's right. Too late. Mm -hmm. But how this states that next election is is already 30 is more than 30 days out. So you would have to have a special ballot at the general just for the initiated or referred measure. Right. So, you have so, to have so that, now now I've got a new concern. <laughs> Which, which I, 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 I like your concern, but my concern is this. So what if you had a hypothetically uh, malicious commission who created an ordinance specifically prior to an election so that it couldn't be voted on until the next election? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so, now, so now that raises the question in my mind, should we have a maximum length? Wherein, if it's beyond that, that the next election would occur, you would need to call a special election. But isn't your ordinance ordinance suspended once your petition or your referendum petition is filed? Yes. Oh, okay. Then Great. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good call. Okay. okay. That's that's fine then. Yeah. But I so you would have 45 days, and if we extrapolated that and put it in that said the ordinance wouldn't take effect for 45 days to allow for that window. Then it could potentially then it never go into potentially it would never go into effect if even if you had a malicious commission that was like, yeah, screw the people, we're gonna do what we want, then they would collect the signatures, bang, it wouldn't get voted on until probably you'd almost have to set a special at that point, probably, and have like the next June you would have it or something like that. Yeah, because if you did the ordinance in the middle of November, which is it's not gonna get voted on until June. Well, hypothetically, until the next June primary. Right. In two years. Right, which, but but as long as it's not in effect, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so, but but that was my point, was that it was like, you know, you could, you could kind of game the system, maybe, depending on yeah, how right. And that's why it's written, so that it, 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 right. gets, it gets stayed once it's the position goes yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's fine. Um, and because this, you, you don't want to have a special election. Right, but, but I'm saying, like, what if, if it didn't get suspended, for example, right? Yeah, then you don't know where you're coming from. Because right? you could, you know, you, yeah, you could pass something... October 10th or something like that, right? And then it could, it would, it would like, if we pass something October 10th of 2018, if we had organs power, that would be in effect until June of 2020, if there was no stay on the petitions, right? And so that was my concern. That was the only reason I brought it up, um, and that's fine as long as as long as that, that we keep that language that it's that it's stayed as soon as the, the number of petitions are filed. And and do you do you think it's reasonable that we do what 64 days? Is that what the number is? to match state law, so for printing of ballots and everything like that? Yeah. You know, but then, you, you know, you also have to think about, you know, the, um, like the people, you know, the people, like the vote by mail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, for instance, uh, like this year, uh, for like the general, when when do you usually actually have all the ballot language and all of the, you know, everything set 
that you have to, from locally, have to send in to the Secretary of State to get the ballots printed and everything like that. Well, didn't we decide that we had to have this by 64 days? 64 days. 64 days before the election, before we can. Yeah. And we're going to use this. But that's. But that's. To get it on the ballot. Yeah. But but but, but when my my point is, 64 days might be not may not be the auditor's drop dead deadline. That might just be state statute. But we gotta. Have, she's gotta have it. You gotta think. Of, she's gotta have it there before the 64 days because. 64 days when? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so maybe you make it 65. <laughs> Katie. right. Katie's got that, yeah. Okay. Well, Cass County, like, totally simplified it. Oh. The applicable provisions of state law will govern the exercise of the powers of initiative and referendum under this charter. And then it says 15%. And then it doesn't say anything else. It doesn't give 30 days. It doesn't, it just says whatever the state says, that's what we're going to use. Is that simpler? Well, it's much simpler. I just don't know what the state says. Exactly. <laughs> but there was this real short and sweet there article on the issue. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I'm not opposed well, to covers it. Why go any further? Well, that's fine, but I just want to make sure that we well, agree with what yeah, the state yeah, says. What are the applicable only... provisions of right. state law? So that's, that's <laughs> the only question. <laughs> I mean, Unless you want to be more restrictive than state, 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 state. Right, but that's, that's the question. Not as restrictive. Right. That's the only question. This is, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I think it's very simple that way. But just, it just we need to make sure that it's right for Emmons County. Do we understand what the state law is? Initiating uh, sure and referring. Uh, the Secretary of State's got a nice PDF. Uh,
really bored at night. Just go read a little century code. Some exciting stuff. The only thing that's more interesting is reading all of the, uh, the uh, what do they even call Re required uh, disclosures on on accounts. Oh yeah. For for like investing accounts. Those are the best. Yeah, you guys to get yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, if, if, this is even kind of interesting compared to if you get into like administrative rules, like we'll read like the North Dakota Department of Health's administrative rules and guidelines. It's like, oh, God. No, no, right? I'm doing it this yet. I'm looking to see if there's any local local stuff here. Knew something and practices. something something for the knowing of the knowing of <laughs> what you knew at the time. I went, what? <laughs> We've got to know the knowing. <laughs> We'd like to know the person who did that to write that. Oh boy. Well, that's what amazes me so much about people who write computer code. Yeah. Is that computer code, like every single line has to make perfect logical sense. And it has to, I mean, so it's like the way that you have to think in order to write computer code is like... Who are you? Right. It's, ama it's amazing. It's, that's the right person to have where right is, talking. Where is... That would be where your is, uh, <laughs> Let's see. Would it be possible for us to make a decision on this on a provisional basis? Um, we could come back later if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, we can do a little more research on it and make sure. I mean, so I mean, so do you feel comfortable with the statement that we we combine Walsh and Cass and basically say uh, with a little bit of Ramsey sprinkled in, which is to say, fifteen percent initiative, ten percent. Uh, referendum, minimum of 300 signatures to be governed by state century code. You know what I'm saying? So we end up with a little bit of all three. And then if we need to change it, we can come back and change it. I like it. Excellent. Smash Wonderful. Together. Is there a motion to do that? And how many days? The state century code. That's the century code. We nailed it. And I'll make a motion. Okay, there's well, a motion. How, how is this going to be written? Yeah, just gonna we're just going to tweak it. It's the end of March. Carrie will do nothing until after the 16th of March. Two jury trials. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. Because what we're going to do is we're taking Walsh's provision, stating the the way in which it's done, the, the amounts, right? Okay, so just yes. let me look at this here. Okay. Adding in, adding so in, taking, yes. taking all <laughs> of Walsh's article five. Right, and saying whichever is less. Okay, so right? basically we're going to do this. Or whichever, whichever is more. Okay, let, let me read this here. So, basically going to say, the citizens of Ramsey County shall have the right to enact or refer ordinances implementing home rule powers. Qualified county electors at least equal a number to 15% for initiative or 10% for referendum, respectively, or a minimum of 300 voters, whichever, or, or 300 elect or signatures, signatures, whichever is higher, of the number of electors voting in the county for the office of governor in the last regular election in which the office of governor was subject to election may by petition initiate or refer ordinances. Uh, and then, let's see here. The referendum petition shall, upon determination by the county auditor that such petition is sufficient, suspend the operation of any ordinance enacted by the board of commissioners, accept those enactments implementing public projects upon which an election or a referendum has already been held pursuant to law or this charter, or which provide for meeting obligations upon an indebtedness accrued by a prior ordinance or a prior election or referendum, or which approve the annual budget and tax assessment, all of which shall not be subject to referendum. The filing of referendum petitions against one or more items, sections, or parts of any ordinance shall not prevent the remainder from going into effect. Referendum petitions shall be filed with the county auditor not later than 45 days after adoption of the ordinance. And then at that point, then we would put in the statement, each ordinance referred to the electors shall be placed upon the ballot as determined by... Yeah, as uh, the, the, or, we, or we could just say the applicable provisions of state law will govern the exercise of powers of initiative and referendum under this charter. Is that what CASA says? Yeah. Then that's fine. Then we replace that paragraph with that paragraph. We'll hold up the last one. Uh, again, the only problem I run into is the question of 
we'll have to do some more research into okay. is there specific expressed powers for local government to do this in the state century code? And I think, I think we'll, we'll do that same thing where we'll put it on the on the agenda specifically for next meeting yeah. that we'll revisit Do this. some more research in the interim and then we can come back and we can always add in that last Walsh language if this doesn't jive. Okay. Right. So that's my motion. <laughs> Oh, you made the motion. I'll say, do you want to repeat that? Oh, who made the motion? I don't think it matters. Who made the motion? Does, does, She's got Candy. Well, Candace. you started. Candy, do you have what we did? Then we kind of, we, we, we have it. Then she has it. Okay. Okay. So, so I have it. Right so I have it. Walsh County's number five. Yep. We're leaving wordage except for we're adding a minimum of 300 signatures, whichever is higher. And then 45 days. And then changing the 30 to the 45 days. Yep. And then at the end of this paragraph, right here, then we're going to put in that Cass County language that says the applicable provisions of state law. That there is there. To the end of that. Yep. Okay. That should be it then. Okay. And then we'll do some research. Well, what about the, these paragraphs that come after, which says about the Committee of Commissioners? Do we want to include that language as it is in Walsh? That still might depend on what's in state law, if the state law covers it or not. Cass doesn't have any of that. Mm -hmm. That's why I wonder if it's And that's what made it law. is in state yeah. law if yeah. Cass doesn't have it. Yeah. Essentially, all it's doing is setting up. And, and, and that's still, like I said, we'll have to do some research, but that's where my concern is because for an initiation or referral in state law, you have to have a sponsor and committee of like 32 people uh, or something like that. It's a lot, 25 or something. Right, uh, which would be basically impossible. Yeah, I mean, you could do it, but in order to do it in the time frame necessary under what we're looking at. But let's let, let's go in and make sure of that. And so yeah. for right now, let's 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 end it on CASAs. We've already got the motion in the second. Yep. Uh, and then we can come back and revisit it with that being an express point on the agenda for next meeting. Sounds good. Perfect. Okay, now do you have it all okay? <laughs> I think we got it. I'm just going to make a note that I will look back and look at that. Okay. I guess what? what are so, so are we going to gonna adopt yeah. all of Article 5 for Walsh County? Just up to the point. Just up, uh, so to, just up, up to, to the last one. Just where we are. Yep. Okay. And then we're switching to gases. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Is Nathan, Nathan, Park, and Parks? Bernina, and Parks? And Parks? Okay. I got more than one thing. Yeah. I thought you said and Parks. Oh. And parks and Parks and Parks and Parks. of the ordinance uh, to include a section on CAS that states um, that any further uh, resolution on that topic will be done according to the state century code. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of adopting those changes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion carried. All right. Moving on to Article 6, referenda by the Board of Commissioners. And I'll read it out loud. Before adopting an ordinance, the Board of County Commissioners, whoop, this is this is not ours. This is this is Walsh's. Sorry. No, I, I, I think it's the same, to be honest. Though. 
Okay, before or before adopting uh, before adopting ordinances or resolution, the board of county commissioners may on its on its own motion submit uh, questions to the county electorate for an advisory vote of the people at any countywide election specified by the board. If the question is submitted in the form of a proposed ordinance and it is approved by a majority of the votes cast thereon, and the board subsequently adopts the ordinance within six months of such a vote, such ordinance shall not be subject to referral by petition. Basically, it's like if, if, if everybody already voted to approve it, you can't vote to unapprove it. It's really what it makes perfect sense. But it is. We're on we're on six, okay. and I think we're probably about to adopt it verbatim. Would be my guess. Okay, just let me look here. I'll move that we adopt it verbatim. Verbatim. Okay. As read. As read. Yes. As it's printed in this. Fair enough, David. One right. Let's do it. Yeah, and then that last word. There's a motion and a second to adopt Article 6. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of adoption signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to the next topic of the agenda, which I need to pull the agenda back up here. Um, can we go back to Article Oh, I'm sorry. Four. Yes. Good, good call. You should you should like keep meetings on, on track at like commission meetings too. That'd be great. I'd like to. Hey, did we did it okay last time? We were here 25 minutes. Yeah, it was only that was the shortest one yet. And I tweaked it and cut it and made it too long. But I think it kind of gets rid of your conflict problem. You love and then tweak for now. Yeah. Yeah. If I forgot something, it's because we all were talking. <laughs> Could we finish with six? Yes, I'll go for Okay. Okay, so I'm going to move it. This is Kevin's written it here for Article 4. I think I should rewrite Section 3. See, I could just rewrite it forever, Ron. So. What? <laughs> I said I think I should rewrite subsection uh, 2, section 2, subsection 3 to say the voting public may at any time initiate a vote with respect to the status of elected offices in respect to responsibilities subject to the restrictions laid out in this document, period. Move that at any time where I am. I like that. And then I would also, okay. uh, sorry, ahead. I would also encourage us to change the verbiage, this document, and, and change it to the charter. Oh, yeah, laid out in the charter. And what's that under? Oh, it's the same. same laid out in this the charter. Like restrictions laid, laid out in, in this, this charter. charter. Yeah. yeah. The only. The, the only question I have is, does this, do, do these uh, d uh, different uh, uh, stances, so to speak, uh, eliminate the possibility of having two elections at the same time? I think so. You believe so? I think so. If you don't think so, tell me. The other thing that I would suggest that we amend uh, in, so that so that it explicitly incur, like it explicitly talks uh, speaks to the merger of offices, 
uh, is to say, to put parentheses S after each time that it says singular office. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that way you say no office says or office may have their scope or status changed. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. This is why I'm playing this play basketball. <laughs> So, I could also put subject to the restriction after the second one where it says around the county commission because that implies it's only going to be during that one election, both election, the primary general election period. I'm going to respectfully disagree with you. I think you could. I think you could still have two elections at the same time, trying to appoint an office while at the same time having that election when that office is up. There's there's nothing there that stipulates that you cannot. It just says that we're going to hold those these elections during either the primary or the general. It doesn't specifically stipulate that we can't My have them at the same time. Question is, say what you just said again though about appointing. Okay, so uh, hypothetically speaking, if, uh, and I'll use Candy for example, but simply enough, is she's up this fall. Okay. If she decided now, I'm ready to resign. But she won the lotto. I'm okay. ready to retire. Here's my statement. And we were working under this premise. Okay. And she gave us notification now we couldn't possibly hold a vote to change the appointed position this fall. It's not possible. It's not plausible. Because we would be having a concurrent vote of changing an elected appoint a position to an appointed position while at the same time having to have an election for the auditor. So you would be electing an auditor while trying to change it to an appointed position in a concurrent election. Yeah. You have to stipulate that it has to happen in the year that it's not up, or possibly in the primary. But I would say you have to have it in the off year. So, for instance, we could not change the auditor if Candy said, "Hey, what? You know, you couldn't change it until the off year." But then at that point, you got another elected official. <laughs> so I don't know how you how you could stipulate to make it work under how this is written. Just because, I, think, I think I might know how to do okay. it. Just a second. Okay. I think the way that it should happen is we should include an enumerated number four under uh, subsection two, um, and then um, okay, four. So the way it would work then is you would add at the end of both two and three under section two, um, provided that it does not conflict with uh, rule four, which are article four. Uh, section two, uh, bullet point four, right? You add that, and then you're, we're adding bullet point four. Just a second, okay? I promise. <laughs> I promise this makes sense. No, 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 no. I promise. Like you're not four yet. Yeah. So, so, right. So that's what four is. Okay. And so four okay. is um, a, a a a vote to change the status or scope of an elected official may not take place in the same election in which that elected official's uh, position is in question, or like is, is the question. Is being elected. That's that like the knowing the knowing of the knowing. It's but the elected of the elected of the elected. But does that make sense, what I'm trying to say there? <laughs> so then you, and, then, and then on two and three, you just reference that it can't conflict with four. Right. Section 2.4, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think what you're saying is, is perfect, but, but uh, it, the only thing I will say is, is essentially how we're writing this because we have to have a, because we're including a provision where we have to have a statement from that office holder, they're not going to run again, that the only time you're ever going to be able to change an elected official to an appointed official is essentially in the two years previous to the primary after the previous election when that person was elected. You've only got two years to do it. Out of an eight-year cycle, or four-year cycle. Sure. 
But that, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. So the only time you'd ever be able to do it is, is say, for instance, Candy got elected in 18, struck the lotto on December 1st, then she came to us and said, I'm resigning January 1, January <laughs> 1 or whatever. So then we would have an appointed auditor at that point, or she, or we, she would say, I'm going to retire. So then you would have that in the prior, in the next election. Then. That's right. the only time you'd be able to do it then. Right. So you're tying That's, your hands quite a bit on when you can do things here. Right, but I, I don't know if that makes it bad. No, I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying I think it actually makes it stronger because the case to the people are is, hey, this is going to be a very limited scope of when it's even possible. But it still has the flexibility to right. set, essentially, you know, but it still leaves a lot of power in the elected office holders. Right. Absolutely. Essentially. So they can basically be like, you oh, know, I want this thing to stay elected. I'm just not going to tell you I'm resigning until after the intro. <laughs> Get my successor in there first and let her decide, right? Well, essentially it does give you that power. Mm -hmm. Because say, say you're not you're up this fall. Mm -hmm. So say you were gonna say, well, I'm ready to retire, and then you would just say, oh, I'll just wait until November eighth of twenty twenty. And then you give us your notice, and then at that point we can't make a change. Unless we call a special election to but, make a change. But but the people still can. The people still can. The people yes. still can, but which the is the important cannot. part. That's right. But I think that that's good. So so the people still can at any point. At, at any point provided that it's not concurrent. So they can, they can call the question at any time, and let's say that they were going to call it before the elected position was elected, then that would just set it to over here, right, the next, the next cycle, and then that person who was elected could, by a vote of the people, have their status changed to appointed. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's just the commission can't do it. I mean, what it comes down to is we're, we're never going to possibly be able to protect against every possible possibility. <laughs> Right, <laughs> but because hypothetically speaking, you, you could have the people initiate that they want to make an elected office appointed and do it at the same time concurrently when that election is running. But, but since the Home Rule Charter stipulates that other that other if 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 the appointment passes, the other election is null and void. Well, unless we include a provision that says it can't happen at the same time that the election happens, which is what the fourth provision wants, right? So then you'd only spend two years as an elected official rather than four, if the people did it. Does this make sense? It makes sense, but it's, 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 the, it's the question of, of does, the, does, the initiate, does the initiation have the power to usurp the election? Well, and so, so in my mind, it shouldn't, right? I should. I don't think so either. But, but, so, but then, yeah. so that, that, fourth, that fourth provision protects against that. <laughs> what? Yes, ma'am. I, I just, I, I just, I don't think you're going to be able to protect, like, from every provision. No, I don't think so. Every swear. incident out there, I mean, they're just not going to be I, mean, I think at this point, it's just Adam and I talking. I think at this point. But anyway, <laughs> we're just, we're just, it's we're just going. It's two boys that are right, but, just but, playing but, tennis. Right. But, but so basically, basically, I think that fourth, that fourth subsection protects in the, in the case that the commission is extremely limited in the times that they can call for the change of an elected position. The community, the community is basically totally unchanged, except that even if they refer prior to an election where it's going to be the auditor's election, the, those changes will not affect the status of that elected position <laughs> until the next half cycle. Yeah, I think that's right. Right? So, so it's a win-win for me. So you're keeping that's that's basically what comes down to it. That's right. But, but that's that's all you got to do is win the lotto. And if I say yes, can we move on? <laughs> I think elected officers who run for position under the premise of this is my position for four years should get their four years. Even if the people don't think so. Right? So the commission would never have the ability to change how long some of these term is, right? But in this case, well, the only thing could run concurrent it. elections, though, because then your appointment of the recorder wouldn't happen until the next time. So once my four years is up, now I know that I have to be appointed at that four-year point. So you, so you basically want another clause which says no, that No, I don't want any more clauses. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what she said. No, this is... We're going through all this, and it's four? probably never going to matter. Sorry, what? Did you type probably. number four? No, not quite. How could she type number four? Yeah. <laughs> that would she type number four? Yeah. This is 
why it took like six months to figure out the Constitution, uh, working like 12 hours a day. Of course, they were half drunk the whole time. But, and they uh, also only thought it was well, going to last a dozen years. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's this is why it took, and they were well, all, it was like all said, they probably quilting. not want to limit it. I mean, the vote of the people is the vote of the people, so they have a right to change a job at any time. And I guess that elected officer, then, if they don't like it, has the right to resign. Um, so you probably would want to limit that, limit that to the county commission can't do it. Right, which is which is very clearly explicit because we would right. still need your written consent and we wouldn't get it. Right. You yeah, know, the way that it's worded. So all, all that you need for for provision. This fourth provision, that Carrie, you're going to have to rewrite it again, Carrie. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I, got, I, got, I got the changes so far. Okay, so okay. so here's the way that, that the fourth one I think should be written, which is to say, uh, I forgot exactly what I was about to say. Uh, for, okay, so there we go. Here it is. Okay. No, no vote of the people may occur. Uh, on the, no, no vote of the people on the status of an elected office, parentheses, S, offices, may, may occur in the same election in which that position is up for election, period. Did it? Did it? Does it make sense? It does. I like it. No vote of the people on the status of an elected office, apostrophe, apostrophe quotation, yes. Yes. <laughs> may occur in the same election in which the opposition is up for an election. Perfect. Period. I like it. Perfect. I will make a motion that we accept for Article 4. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 And while we're on that, I have one more suggested change and it's okay. just of two words and then okay. I'm done. And I'm okay. done. She's going to make the, the, he can't hold up, he does get his head out of it. He's got, it's, it's no. screw it, he's got to, like, got to throw it out there. No, it's just, it's just to add after, or resignation, to add or retirement. I like it. That's it. So it's it consent it's or resignation or retirement. Do you to retirement or no? Mm. You guys are well, taking no, it. well. You say no vote to the people. You're taking that away from them, then. Well, yeah, but it's just Only to avoid. Time. It's just it's just to avoid the problem that Adam was saying, where you'd have a vote for to change something to appointed and also to run the election for it. Does that so make sense? It can't be at the same time. You're limiting their vote in certain elections, not every election. And so all that that would do is it would punt it to the next two-year election, yeah. right? So it would just punt that. Even if it happened before, then it would punt it to the next two-year election. Is the only thing that would happen. Yeah. So even if you had it elected at one election two years later, you could change it to appointed. Yeah. Is basically what it is in the. Yeah, it's, it's just basically saying the that, that that the year you just the, can't do that that, that whenever the auditor is up, you can't change the auditor to an appointed position only in the year in the general or primary election year that they are not up. Perfect. That way you that don't way run into the problem of having to run two elections get. for the same thing. Because right. otherwise you would run for a job you might not get. Yes, hypothetically speaking. And that's not very nice. And that's a lot of work to run for a job that might not exist the day after the election. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I hope that <laughs> That's why we're, that's why we're yeah. going through this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now four is done? Well, we have to vote on that. I'll make a right. motion that yes. we accept yes. everything as stated. That's fine. I, I'd like to do a reading of it. We okay. didn't ever do the reading of it. Oh, okay. As you'll remember. That but but I need Carrie to finish making revisions. Before oh, I can make assuming it. I got your revisions. I'm just jumping down. I promise I'm done. I promise. Well, I just four elections. Section one: Offices to be elected. One: The Board of County Commissioners shall consist of five members who shall be elected by nonpartisan ballot. All the candidates seeking the office of county commissioner shall be voted on by qualified electors. Two, the elected offices of county treasurer, recorder, auditor, sheriff, and state's attorney shall remain intact as elected positions except as may be modified pursuant to Article 4, Section 2. Section 2, change and alteration of elected offices. 
No office filed by election within the county shall have its elected status or scope of responsibility changed through any means other than a vote of the people of Ramsey County during a regularly scheduled primary or general election. Two, Ramsey County Commission has the authority to call a vote of the people with respect to the status of elected offices and respective responsibilities upon written notification from the office holder of consent and or resignation or retirement from office subject to the provision of subsection 4. Mm -hmm. 3. The voting public may at any time initiate a vote with respect to the status of elected offices and respective responsibilities subject to the restrictions laid out in the charter and also subject, subject to the provision of subsection 4 Subsection 4, no vote of the people on the status of an elected office, S, may occur in the same election in which that position is up for election. <coughs> Closer or not? I think, I think, we're, I think we're basically there. So, and I'm really, really, really sorry, and we don't have to address this today. <laughs> but, 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 I will. But, <laughs> under the way that it's written right now, you'd functionally never be able to change the county commission. Because every election would have a county commissioner up for election. So, basically we're going to need a separate clause to govern the commission. So if you ever needed to change it to three members, the way that this is written now, you could never do that. And that's, that's all, all you'd have to do is put comma with the exclusion of county commissioners. Right, and then you'd say county commissioners are governed under state law, right? Which is fine. I mean, that's that. But but just let's be clear: you do need that because the way it's written now, you just always have five commissioners forever. And maybe yeah, we want I mean, that. And in all honesty, I mean, not to extend the conversation, but that is kind of an interesting thing to talk about because say say you change from five county commissioners to three, you would you would you, you there's no way you could avoid running a concurrent election to go from five to three, and who loses their jobs? The people that were running at that point in time. I suppose that's, but then what, what if you're doing it when it's three people are up instead of two? So, that's so who, who keeps their job and who doesn't? Does it have to happen in a special election or a primary? There's got to be something in state statute that lays that out. That is, that is kind of interesting. I don't know. But so, but I'm, just, I'm just saying that with the way that Homer was written, you'd never be able to touch it. So, no, no, I'm keeping my job. <laughs> well, let, let's, 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 that's, I'm fine let's with pump that until another people day. People can get rid of me. Is there a motion to approve Article 4 as read by um, Ms. Agamemnon's? So, can I interrupt? Yes. Um, <coughs> we had a motion earlier for Article 4 to adopt Morton County's signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Is there any other further business that needs to come before the Charter Committee? Hearing no business. Oh, next meeting date. All right, what about the, let's okay. say hearing no new business. Okay. We need to decide on the meeting date. Uh, let's see. I will be out of, and it doesn't mean kind of a meeting, but I will be out uh, the 19th, 20th, and 21st. I have a jury trial next week and the week following, so I'm really not around. Not until, so you wouldn't be available until, until probably after the 21st. Yeah. 
So we could do the 22nd or thereafter if we work for my schedule on carries, it sounds like. I'm on the 22nd through the, basically the 1st of April. But that doesn't matter. What, what now? What days are you going? I'm going to be on the 19th, 20th, and 21st, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So what, what, are, you, what are you going to be on, Paul? The 22nd through basically till April 1st. Oh, okay. So you might just time to have it. And I know Susie, I think she's going to be back. She, uh, she's got... Wednesdays are always better. Wednesdays are so bad too. Just the way the court filler is. Or I mean, Adam can absolutely act as chair. I can't be here. Susie is on... Um, She's back March 1st. She's gone March 7th through March 11th, and she's out the 15th and 16th. Otherwise, she's back for the end. So she'd be around the end of the month. Okay. And I'm here before the 22nd. So, did, Carrie, did you say that the 19th would work for you? 19th is the middle Wednesday? I won't be here, but I mean, I'm sorry, the 21st. Monday. The 21st. I'm sorry, the 21st, the middle of Wednesday. Pull up the card calendar here. Okay. Wednesday, the 21st, because then, because then you would be here, Paula, right? No. Oh. On the no, 21st. I'm sorry, I'm not here the 21st. You're not here the 21st. No. Okay. I'm here the 19th and 20th. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Second. All right, we stand adjourned. Thank you all.